Dr. Martin Luther King, by his leadership of nonviolent protests and marches throughout the civil rights movement, accomplished the extraordinarily rare feat of having pulled off a genuine revolution without ever having fired a shot. In a very tangible demonstration, he showed us the practical way to achieve significant societal change that accrues to the benefit of every American. His deep reservoir of spiritual strength impelled him to answer the call of moral consciousness irrespective of the evil that would have to be confronted. His religion was not a soothing coping mechanism by which to passively accept satanic injustice, but rather his religion was a bugle call to action to cast Satan's injustice out of American society. Dr. King achieved much before his assassination, probably at the instigation of our own government, but he would be the first to admit that despite the undeniable advance for many, as dramatically symbolized in the 2008 presidential election, far too many have been left behind and forgotten, living in conditions that can by no stretch of the imagination be rightly considered the promised land of King's vision or the shining city on a hill of Reagan's imagination. Before the end of government-enforced segregation in America, the entire political elite, Republicans and Democrats, conservatives and liberals, as well as most of America, was racist. The South was racist, but so was Wall Street. So were the national networks in New York and the Hollywood studios. So were the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, and the Washington Post, all of whom had no blacks in meaningful positions any more so than the segregated South. But when Dr. King and all those who marched with him embarrassed the political elite in the sight of the world, enough of the political elite assented to half of Dr. King's program. They accepted integration and affirmative action. They anointed Dr. King with a national holiday and continually praise his call for all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, to join hands and sing. But they have been very eclectic in their praise, never mentioning Dr. King's call for economic justice. John Gehring, communications director and senior writer for Catholics in Alliance for the Common Good, writes, as we pause to honor King's legacy, it's tempting to sanitize his radical call for economic justice or temper his prophetic words about war. We prefer King as an icon stored safely behind history's glass case. When his words are quoted these days, we rarely hear the righteous anger of a preacher who denounced the Vietnam War and described America as the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. We choose not to reflect on his warnings about the arrogance of American foreign policy. We avoid an honest grappling with his critique of capitalism as a system that permits necessities to be taken from the many to give luxuries to the few. The racism, poverty, and militarism that King shined a moral spotlight on in his time remain profound challenges. Paul Sweet of the New Social Democrats writes that Dr. King is routinely praised across the land on the national holiday named for him. In the official domesticated version of King's life, the great civil rights leader sought little more than the overthrow of Jim Crow segregation and voting rights for blacks in the U.S. South. Beyond these victories, the good Negro that American ideological authorities wish for King to have been only wanted whites to be nicer to a select few African Americans, giving some small number of trusted blacks highly visible public positions. But King was rather unimpressed by his movement's mid-1960s triumphs over Southern racism, viewing the Voting Rights and Civil Rights Acts as a relatively partial accomplishment that dangerously encouraged mainstream white America to think that the nation's racial problems were automatically solved. 
Dr. King considered these early victories to have fallen far short of his deeper objective, advancing social, economic, political, and racial justice across the entire nation, including its northern, ghetto-scarred cities, and indeed, around the world. The whitewashing of Dr. King's legacy to keep the thought of economic justice out of public debate is advanced by the political elite that financially controls both political parties. Hence, economic justice will never come to fruition with Democrats, and Lord knows it isn't going to come to fruition with the Republicans. A change in thought and action is requisite, and that change is that you must viably threaten the Democratic Party with loss of your support. We suggest creating that threat is accomplished by affiliation with a budding mass movement for the common good that is genuinely committed to economic justice. To that end, we invite you to seriously consider our presentation entitled Inner City Revival and the Common Good. And then, under the auspices of Citizens for the Common Good, consider making a pledge to a future citizen presidential candidate of $25 or more and get a Citizens for the Common Good yard sign, bumper sticker, or button to let your community know there's a third choice blossoming in America. A turtle can only make progress by sticking his neck out. We're going to have to be like that turtle and do the same. We have lost two generations since the end of the civil rights movement. You know we cannot lose a third. On behalf of Citizens for the Common Good, we hope you decide to join with us because America needs a third choice.